Here's one of those beautiful, hard to believe, but easy to prove number theory results. The sum of the first n cubes, one cubed plus two cubed and so on up to n cubed is equal to the square of the sum of the first n natural numbers, one plus two and so on up to n squared. It's almost too beautiful that math should work out like this, but lo and behold, this is true, and we're going to go over how to prove it in today's Wrath of Math lesson. You can probably guess this is going to be a proof by induction. If you're not familiar with proof by induction, check out my lesson on the topic. I'll leave a link to it in the description. I'll also leave a link to a proof of this result, which we're going to use in our proof today. This result states that the sum of the first n natural numbers, one plus two plus all the way up to n, is equal to that natural number n, that last natural number in the sum, times the next natural number, n plus one, divided by two. So this is gonna come in super handy and will really be the key to our proof, and then we'll just have to do a little bit of algebra and we'll be done. All right, let's get into it. You probably know where to start. An induction proof starts with the basis step. I'll just write basis. The basis step is where we prove our result is true for the first number of interest. In this case, that's the first natural number, as it often is, n equals one. And as is usual, the basis case is pretty trivial. One cubed is indeed equal to one squared. So we see that the sum of the first cube, which is just one cubed, is equal to the square of the sum of the first one natural numbers. That's just one squared. So this is just one equals one. The basis case checks out. So that's it. That's all we have to do for the basis case. Show that the result is true for n equals one. Quickly, let's just check out n equals two since it's a little more interesting. We expect that the sum of the first two cubes, one cubed plus two cubed, should be equal to the square of the sum of the first two natural numbers, one plus two squared. One cubed is one, two cubed is eight, so that's one plus eight, and then we have one plus two, which is three, to the power of two. And look at that, nine equals nine. It checks out for n equals two as well. That's not necessary for the proof, but it's definitely more interesting. Let's go ahead and jump into the induction step. For the induction step of our induction proof, remember that all we do is first assume the result is true for some natural number k. This is called the induction hypothesis. Of course, this is a valid assumption to make because in the basis case, we proved that indeed our result is true for some natural number. In particular, it's true for the first natural number. Then in our induction step, all we need to do to complete the proof is show that if our result is true for some natural number k, then it must also be true for the next natural number, k plus one. I wanna quickly point something out that will help us see where we're going in this proof, and this is often a helpful thing to do. Remember the theorem we mentioned at the beginning of the lesson for an expression that's equal to the sum of the first n natural numbers. In this case, we've got the sum of the first k plus one natural numbers squared. Applying that theorem tells us that this is equal to the last natural number in the sum, which is k plus one, multiplied by the next natural number, which would be k plus two, divided by two, and then all squared. So if we could show that the sum of the first k plus one cubes is equal to this, then we could apply that same theorem about the sum of the first n natural numbers to go the other way and to show that this sum is equal to this. So keep that in mind, that's where we're going, and I'm just going to shrink this a little bit and set it aside for us. So here's how we begin. We want to show that the sum of the first k plus one cubes is equal to this expression here because we know that's equal to the square of the sum of the first k plus one natural numbers. So where can we start? Well, we know that the sum of the first k plus one cubes is equal to the sum of the first k cubes plus k plus one cubed. And that's helpful because we know the sum of the first k cubes is equal to that, the sum of the first k natural numbers squared. So this is all equal to one plus two all the way up to k squared, and then we've gotta add that cube of k plus one. Remember, it's just substitution to get this equality. We know the sum of the first k cubes is equal to this. That was our induction hypothesis, so we just did some substitution. 
Then, since we've got the sum of the first k natural numbers, let's go ahead and apply that theorem that we've mentioned. That the sum of the first k natural numbers is equal to the last natural in the sum, k, multiplied by the next natural number, k plus 1, divided by 2. And then, since this is getting squared, we've got to square this expression. And, of course, we've got k plus 1 cubed still on the end. Now let's go ahead and carry out this squaring operation so that we can work with everything a bit more. Squaring, what's here in the brackets, gives us k squared multiplied by k plus 1 squared, all divided by 2 squared, which is equal to 4. And then again, plus k plus 1 cubed. Now let's just bring our orange expression down so we can keep the goal in sight, so we know where we are headed. Let's rewrite this sum in one fraction. In order to give k plus 1 cubed a denominator of 4, we of course just have to multiply it by 4 over 4. And so this is equal to k squared multiplied by k plus 1 squared plus 4 times k plus 1 cubed all over our common denominator of 4. Now, in order for the expression that we've got our sights on to be a bit more useful, let's also carry out the exponentiation in that expression, because that's going to look a bit closer to what we have here. We'll go ahead and zoom in and do that. So, carrying out this squared operation, we have k plus 1 squared times k plus 2 squared divided by 2 squared, which of course is 4. All right, now we are very close. Notice that in the expression we want to get to, we've got a factor of k plus 1 squared. Additionally, in the sum that we're currently at, we've also got a factor of k plus 1 squared in both terms. This k plus 1 cubed could be rewritten as k plus 1 squared times k plus 1. So let's do that. So this is equal to k squared multiplied by k plus 1 squared plus 4 times k plus 1 squared times k plus 1. Again, that's just rewriting k plus 1 cubed as k plus 1 squared times k plus 1. And of course, we've got a denominator of 4. All right, now what do you think we should do? Well, certainly it would be a good idea to factor k plus 1 squared out of both of these terms in the sum. That'll get us one step closer to our goal, which has a factor of k plus 1 squared. So factoring out k plus 1 squared gives us, of course, k plus 1 squared multiplied by k squared, that's that factor of k squared there, plus 4 times k plus 1. That's what's left over here on the right. And then again, can't forget, divide by 4. All right, we've got two more steps. Perhaps you can see exactly where this is going. Let's distribute the 4 through this term of k plus 1. So that will give us k plus 1 squared multiplied by k squared plus distributing 4 through k plus 1 gives us plus 4k plus 4. And again, all of this is being divided by, let me straighten that out, all of this is being divided by 4. And look at that, folks. You're not going to get a much more obvious term to factor than that. k squared plus 4k plus 4 is equal to k plus 2 squared. So we can rewrite this as k plus 1 squared multiplied by k plus 2 squared divided by 4. Look at that, just like we wanted. Let's point out the big move again. We rewrote k squared plus 4k plus 4 as k plus 2 squared because k times k will give us the k squared k times 2 plus 2 times k will give us the 4k, and 2 times 2 will give us the 4. So these two things are equal. It's possible you've forgotten why we wanted to get an expression like this in the first place. If so, let me remind you. All the factors we've got here are squares. So now we're going to go in the other direction and take out the square exponent. By that, I mean we're going to rewrite this as k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 2, divided by 2, all squared. Remember, we want to show that this is equal to the sum of the first k natural numbers squared. So we know we need something like a bunch of stuff in parentheses to the power of 2, and that's exactly where we are. And now, my friends, what is this equal to? 
Just remember that classic theorem, the sum of the first n natural numbers is equal to that last natural number in the sum, n, times the next natural number, n plus 1, divided by 2. So then what do you notice about this here? Well, this must be equal to the sum of the first k plus 1 natural numbers, because we've got the last number in that sum, k plus 1, times the next natural number, k plus 2, divided by 2. So by applying this theorem, this is equal to 1 plus 2 plus all the way up to k plus k plus 1 all squared. And again, there are links in the description in case you haven't seen a proof of this beautiful result we're using. But that, my friends, concludes the proof, because this is the square of the sum of the first k plus 1 natural numbers. And remember, what was at the beginning of all of these equalities? Well, it was the sum of the first k plus 1 cubes. So we just completed the induction proof. We first showed that our result is true for the first natural number. Then we showed that if it's true for some natural number, it must also be true for the next natural number. Thus, we have now proven that the sum of the first n cubes is equal to the square of the sum of the first n natural numbers. Beautiful. So I hope this video helped you understand this induction proof. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.